Hi everyone! Today I'm going to be showing you how to make coasters and incense from nature and your own kitchen. These projects will ultimately go hand in hand with each other as the sawdust produced for making the coasters will help me construct the incense and I'll place the incense on the coasters to burn. The first thing we're going to do is prepare to collect the sawdust. I'm cleaning the bag that normally collects dust and sawdust produced by the miter saw. There are a couple fibers left in the bag, but that should be okay. I clean this bag as thoroughly as possible, and some of them just refuse to come out. I am using a branch of dogwood from a fallen tree. And you might notice that it's cracked, so we're going to have to section that off until we find the portion of the wood that isn't cracked. I didn't cut far enough because I can still see the crack, and I can also see where it ends. So we're going to have to lop that entire portion of the wood off. Success. This smells really, really nice in here now because the dogwood sawdust is extremely aromatic and it just proves to show that it's gonna go really well in my incense. All right, we got quite a few coasters here. I left the last section of the wood untouched because it might've been cracked or damaged from the elements. So I decided to leave this intact. In the meantime, let's check out the sawdust we made over here. You can see there's a lot. And I can definitely feel a lump of sawdust inside this bag. So mission accomplished. If you're not sticking around for the coasters and clicked on this video solely for the incense, please feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter. In other words, I'm going to sand these guys and then I'm going to apply linseed oil to them. It's, um, it's a sealer. Linseed oil is waterproof. It makes the wood waterproof. It's pretty much like a natural polyurethane. The next step is to sand down the rough cut coasters with a belt sander. We want to make sure they're smooth and splinter free. Alright, here I have my linseed oil. Got it from Home Depot. We're just going to crack this open. Hold on, I need a screwdriver. I'm going to pour some into this paper dish over here and dip a cloth into it. That's how I'll apply the linseed oil to the coasters. I have a shop towel here. I'm going to fold it, dip it in, and simply rub the coasters with the oil. Here, this is the difference. Pretty astounding. I've been racking up numerous uses for these coasters. As my herbal apothecary is expanding, that means the quantity of leaky, oily, staining bottles in my arsenal has also increased. So I need these to protect my tables. I'm also making so many of these because, no, I'm not going to use all of them. I'm definitely giving them away for the holidays because most people have uses for coasters, at least where I live. Everyone has some sort of hot beverage out. You know those scented candles we've made? These are good candle plates. Already, I'm going to need to pour more oil into my dish because the wood, the porous wood, absorbs all the oil and brings out these wonderful pigments. All right, I'm running halfway through and you can definitely spot the difference between the wood that had linseed oil applied to it and the wood that didn't. Squeezing the oil out of this cloth. If you're wondering, no, I'm not touching my camera with my fingers. I'm actually using the tip of my nose to operate it. <laughs> like, press the record button. Okay, since linseed oil is also highly flammable, I'm going to unravel my cloth, and I'm going to set it out to dry on concrete before I dispose of it. So just keep in mind of that. I'm going to set these out to dry. They don't need to dry for long. I just don't want them to be oily or smelly. Linseed oil doesn't smell bad, but it definitely has a smell. And I don't think it's a smell I would really want in my room. So I'm just going to leave these to dry for maybe like an hour or two. You don't have to. I just want to. You know what? There's a lot of good I could do with this. I could, of course, plane the bottom so it <laughs> stands at 180 degrees, you know, flat. And then I could drill a hole in here and use that as a, as a holster for a pillar candle. See, there's infinite things you could do with wood. Okay, welcome back if you're skipping over to here from the last chapter. Um, let's turn our attention to the sawdust. All right. 
Alright, I got a good amount of sawdust. We got our four ingredients here. First, I'm using a binding agent, which is... The one I'm using is rice starch, but you could also use cornstarch or any of the other materials listed. Next, I got my flammable, something that burns. In this case, I'm making incense cones. So we're using our dogwood sawdust, but you could also use candle wicks if you want to roll incense. You know, there's a little bit piece of wood in the middle of incense. If you want to purchase that, go ahead. But these, those little sticks are especially designed for incense and to burn correctly. So I wouldn't try to make that at home. Candle wicks are a good alternative. Then we have a little bit of water and of course our scent. Since it's this time of year, I'm using literally my favorite thing in the world, cedar. So, and I might combine that with a bit of cinnamon and ground nutmeg. So the goal of making a scent is you need to take anything you have. It could be dried rosemary, it could be something you found in the kitchen. Whatever it has to be, it needs to be in powder form. You could make it chunky and kind of tear it up by hand, but that's going to inhibit the burning. All right, we have the cedar ground to a powder. And now it's time to start making our mixture. So I'm going to start with the sawdust. This is a half a tablespoon, 10 milliliters. Amazingly fragrant cedar, starch. This is a very, very important note. Do not use too much starch. On my first batch of incense, I ended up using too much. And that inhibited the burning because it bound the incense so tightly that it would not burn. It was as solid as rock when it dried and it didn't work. I'll include snapshots of me making my second batch, which did burn and it burned very nicely. After I added the sawdust and the cedar and mixed them together, I decided to spoon in a bit of nutmeg for the smell of it. I mixed all of the dry ingredients together and added water gradually until it was at a viscosity that I found to be reminiscent of dough. Here you can see me adding a bit more water to make it a little more malleable, easy to shape. Then using the tips of my fingers, I shaped all of the incense into cone shapes. Well, that wasn't a lot of material that I put into that bowl, but it yielded already eight cones. That's pretty, that's pretty respectable. I then placed all of the cones onto a fireproof tray and placed them on the radiator. This is footage of me making the second batch. In the meantime, let's go check on our coasters. Okay, I brought them up and they look so good. These are coasters I made from the same tree um, approximately four months ago. They look vastly different. That's really strange. But they both look amazing. I love both of them. And yeah, these will make amazing gifts. Oh no, I have nowhere to put my tea. Whatever shall I do? I know. I hope you found that helpful or inspiring or something. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing week.